Hi, this is Ahmed Alogaili and Manos Berlakis, presenting case 246 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is the follow-up of case 233 that was a failed case of retrograde CTO PCI. This time, we achieved success as we will describe. The patient was an elderly gentleman with refractory angina. He did have a CTO of the LAD. He had an occluded vein graft to the LAD, and we had done a retrograde approach two months prior, but it was unsuccessful despite crossing retrogradely. We could not advance the retrograde microcatheter into the undergrade guy catheter. So again, that was the case 233. So the patient came back for a repeat attempt. Once again, we have an occlusion of the saphenous vein graft to the LAD. We have a CTO of the mid LAD. Also pay attention to this diagonal branch that is not huge, but it's about 1.5 millimeters that will become relevant as we will discuss later on. So we do have dual access. We engage the vein graft with an AL guide and the left main with an EBU guide. This is a long occlusion. The distal vessel is poorly visualized. There is heavy calcification. There is tortuosity. So our plan was to try retrograde again and potentially do reverse CART in a different segment than we did before to facilitate externalization of the retrograde wire. So we have uh, attempts to go retrograde. We did use uh, a polymer jacket guide wire. This is uh, a Gladius Mongo that had some difficulty going retrograde. To get better su uh, support, we inserted a six friends trap liner, and then uh, we did use a dual lumen microcatheter, as we had done in the previous case. And using the dual lumen, we were able to advance a Pilot 200 guide wire retrograde into the LAD. There you go, so the wire goes retrograde. We advanced the Pilot 200 enough that it allowed us to advance uh, a retrograde coarser microcatheter next to the distal cap. We then did undergrade dissection. We used a Mongo guide wire that seems to be knuckling into the occlusion. And then we used the undergrade knuckle as a marker to advance a retrograde wire. And this is a retrograde Mongo. And now we do have overlap of the retrograde and the undergrade knuckled guide wires. We then inserted a guide extension in the undergrade direction. And then we were able, using the standard guide extension reverse card, to advance the retrograde guide wire inside the undergrade guide catheter. In contrast to the previous time, where we could not get the retrograde microcatheter to advance, this time we were able, likely because we used a different re-entry point, to advance our retrograde Corsair into the undergrade guide extension. Even though this was successful, we did have a lot of difficulty advancing an R350 guide wire until it was externalized. And this is likely because of the significant tortuosity. We had to navigate this 180-degree bend and the calcium within the occlusion. But eventually, we were able to externalize the R350. We predilated. There was significant calcium and balloon under expansion, so we did intravascular lithotripsy. And then we used the undergrade guide extension to deliver long stents. There was still an area of under expansion. That's why we used the SIS open balloon up to 40 atmospheres, and this successfully expanded this area of calcification. There was also significant disease in the left main and the LAD and the circumflex, and we used a technique we almost never use, which is a mini crush. This is also, in a way, a T uh, technique because the angle is very favorable here have essentially almost a 90 degree angle. So we deployed a stand on the side branch, then a stand in the main branch, we rewired, and we did a kissing balloon inflation, and this provided an excellent result. We did advance um, a guide wire in this diagonal branch that was preserved. And we did get uh, a nice final result with hot T3 flow into the LAD. However, we did lose this uh, small diagonal branch that was uh, present there in the beginning. So 
the patient did have um, some uh, chest discomfort. This is the missing diagonal. It was present before and then it's missing afterwards. And likely because of the occlusion of this branch, the patient had mild chest discomfort and mild EKG changes, but he did pretty well. So in summary, this case shows that sometimes the second attempt can be successful. We did a, a similar approach with the first time, but the difference is that we did the guide extension reverse cut at a different location within the vessel. We did use a, a occluded vein graft to go retrograde. We did have difficulty with the reverse cart and with externalization, and that was likely because of calcium and tortuosity, which is fairly common in previous bypass patients. We did not protect a diagonal branch, which we lost, emphasizing the importance of protecting the side branches when we do dissection or reentry. And then we finally did uh, a bifurcation standing, a mini cross slash T standing on the distal left main, which is again not something we commonly do, but the angle here was favorable, close to 90 degrees, without much disease um, in the ostia of the vessels. Thank you.